The stratospheric rise of emoji has been hitting the headlines in 2015. Its rapid adoption on a global scale raises fundamental questions about the changing nature and status of language in the digital age. Here are my responses to some of the burning questions that I've been asked on this front in the broadcast and written media over the past year. Oxford Dictionary has set tongues wagging, making headlines in the process by naming an emoji, the face with tears of joy emoji, its 2015 word of the year. The emoji beats stiff competition from more conventional words like ad blocker, refugee, and my personal favourite, lumbersexual, to the coveted title. But is an emoji actually a word? The commonplace definition of a word is a discrete, meaningful unit of written or spoken language. But setting aside our educated prejudice, words come in all shapes and forms. In spoken language, despite protests from the grammar police, expressions like gonna, the condensed form of going to, and know what I mean, reduced from know what I mean, are word-like. We are just a prosody including tempo and pauses, so that they behave as single units. Yes, as bona fide words. And condensing or telescoping multi-word units is par for the course. No one would object to goodbye being a perfectly acceptable English word, presumably. But it's a condensed form of the longer phrase, God be with you, common in the language of Shakespeare. And of course, the gestured signs in sign languages are word-like too. We now know that sign languages really are the functional equivalents of spoken language. So, can an emoji be a word? Just like the words that populate our magnificent bastard tongue, as John McWhorter so aptly dubs English, emojis often do function in word-like ways. In text speak, when someone writing to their spouse says, don't forget to feed the cat, with the cat emoji replacing the word, this is an instance of what linguists refer to as code switching, an expression from one language being embedded in a sentence using another. Emoji is a system of communication, and in this instance an emoji is being used in a word-like way. In our brave new digital world, emoji really is the sign of our times. Over 80% of us now use these colourful glyphs on a regular basis in digital communication. And from this perspective, Oxford Dictionaries were perfectly entitled to name an emoji as their 2015 Word of the Year. Most of us, most of the time, blithely assume that in our daily social spoken encounters, we derive meaning from the language others use when we gossip with friends, conduct business meetings, chat over a drink after work, or even discuss the household chores or finances with family members. But one well-informed estimate reveals that a staggering 65 to 70 percent of social meaning comes from non-verbal cues. This includes paralinguistic cues, the undulating rise and fall of our international pitch contours when we speak. For instance, I can say, with falling pitch, I love you. And this is a declaration of undying love. But with rising pitch, I love you. This becomes a derisive counterblast that can be an ironic put down, which is probably best not said to your dearest if you wish to actually keep them as your nearest. The other kind of cue is body language, including gestures and facial expressions. On one estimate, humans can produce and recognise up to 250,000 distinct facial expressions. From this perspective, the suite of yellow emoji facial expressions with smiles, frowns and tears is apt indeed. Language, words and grammar provides much of the content of our spoken message. But emotional expression, our personality, our own unique voice comes from the non-verbal cues. And these cues nuance, complement, and even change the meanings of the words. And they're essential for enabling empathy 
and inducing emotional resonance in our addressee, which is what oils effective communication. Without this range of nonverbal cues, spoken interaction is impoverished, to say the least. We've all experienced the angry jerk phenomenon, the email or digital communication we receive from someone we know to be otherwise sane and calm, who comes across as a shouty, angry twerp. And this is because digital text alone sucks the empathy out of the words. Once we press the send button, we lose control of how the message is interpreted and the addressee has no way of knowing whether the sender is serenely sipping a martini beside a tropical pool or sending it in red-faced midnight rage. And this is where emoji comes in. It is to text speak what intonation and other non-verbal cues are to our spoken words. It adds a personal voice to the message. It signals how the word should be interpreted. It nuances and complements them affecting their tone, their meaning even. An emoji is a visual gestalt. It provides a complex emotional spectrum in a single glyph. Oxford Dictionary's laughing face with tears of joy emoji being a case in point. And it's almost impossible to be mean using emoji. Who can be offended even when receiving an angry face emoji? After all, the somewhat childish glyphs are mean proof. They are more than mere splashes of adolescent colour. There can be no doubting the expressive power of emoji. The communicative value of language comes from its ability to affect the mental states, thoughts, wishes, feelings and even behaviour of others. And it can even change states of affairs in the world as when, for example, a member of the clergy pronounces a couple husband and wife. Even mundane examples like, shut the door on your way out, please, show how we use language to influence the behaviour of others. But emoji also has this same interactive, interpersonal power as language to get stuff done. In early 2015, a Brooklyn teenager was arrested for threatening the NYPD. He'd posted an alleged terroristic threat on a public Facebook status update. But what hit the headlines was this. The alleged threat didn't use language, but rather emoji. And specifically gun emojis pointing at a police officer emoji. The New York District Attorney issued an arrest warrant precisely because, his judgment was, the emojis were functioning in a similar way to language. It was as if the teenager had written, gonna shoot me a cop. And this, probably the world's first ever alleged emoji terror offence, reveals the communicative power of emoji. It can behave in very language-like ways. Of course, emoji is not a fully-fledged language. It doesn't have a grammatical system, for instance, and only a relatively limited vocabulary. A little under 1,300 emojis exist in the 2015 Unicode standard. But some have even attempted to redress this. A visual designer recently translated Lewis Carroll's classic Alice in Wonderland, a book of over 27,000 words, into emoji, using around 25,000 of the glyphs. And in so doing, he developed a rudimentary grammatical system using emojis as grammatical markers. But for many, this may be a step too far. An emoji for most of us is primarily used to support rather than replace the meanings of English words. But give it time. The only thing we can be sure of is that emoji and the digital revolution that it's part of is changing the nature of the way we communicate. And in the process, what we might think of as language.